I wanted to make a quick video of this uh, new floating hide that I put together. Um, got the idea from Ray Hennessy, a great photographer online. I'll put some links uh, to his original uh, video on this. He also has some uh, great float videos uh, where he goes out and uses his rig. Um, I made mine a little bit different. Uh, this one, uh, I have access to a pickup, so I wanted to keep this together as much as possible to put it in the bed of the truck, and I'll, I'll show you that. Um, also wanted it to be as light as possible and, uh, you know, not much assembly or disassembly. So those were kind of the goals. Definitely had to have it float. Didn't really want to, to be able to use mine to support my weight. Uh, figured I'd just walking around, uh, at least for this first one. So uh, I made it a little bit simpler uh, than, than Ray's. And, you know, it has uh, only one boogie board uh, versus two on his. Um, dad actually helped me uh, think of the, the idea of, of what we use for this. We use some plastic shelving units uh, kind of as the frame. Also thought about using a cooler, but that was gonna take a, a good bit of destruction. And this, this plastic framing unit seems like it's gonna work okay. So I'll, uh, I'll grab the camera and show you some of the components here. I'll have links to everything uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the video. Uh, so you can see what I used. You can probably come up with stuff around your house or, or maybe even some, some, some better things. Uh, but it, it actually, I tried it yesterday, first time out. It was a little rough first time out getting, you know, used to this and it was windy, it was not optimal conditions. I was able to get at least one uh, pretty nice shot of a hooded brigander. And uh, it was more of a proof of concept. It actually it did work. The ducks did see it. They, they, they shied away from it just a touch. I might've moved a little quick. It, you know, they were a little leery, but they'd have never come near me if it was just me and waders, you know, standing in the water. So uh, it actually is gonna work and I'm sure I'll, I'll get better with it uh, as I use it. So let's, let's take a closer look at this thing. So now let's take a closer look at the floating hide. Um, like I mentioned, what I what we did was was take a, a shelving unit, plastic shelving unit. We've all probably seen these things. Um, this one happened to be perforated. You might be able to find one that's not. Uh, no real preference there. Uh, one that's not might be a little bit simpler, and I'll I'll go into why. Um, but but this works. Um, this again, for, I keep comparing back to Ray's because you you know you you can see a lot of these online. Most of them are built with from the base up, in that they're a floating base and they have a. A, uh, a gimbal style head you know attached to the the floor base which i think would work really well in all actuality what i liked about rays though was the center column and the ability to to adjust the height that may or may not prove to be practical or even necessary but there are times you, you might get into a bigger bird and you could be a little bit more of a, a, a you know head on or eye on elevation so it could prove useful also if the water gets rough you can kind of raise your camera up uh, with this center post and i can literally lay you know the boogie board's two inches, another couple inches there. So I, I can get, you know, four inches, five inches max off the water if I want to uh, with the camera lens, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, what else? So this was one boogie board. Uh, and again, I'll have links, but I just cut this in half. I used a jigsaw. You could, uh, you know, use, use a hand saw, any kind of coping saw, anything to, to cut it right in half. Uh, it's no big deal there. I fixed it with um, three bolts. I just used quarter inch bolts right through the bottom with, you know, big washers just to kind of hold it. And you, you know, this is a fragile thing. This isn't made for, for beating into the, the weeds or, or being rough with. You gotta be careful with this, you know, kind of like a balsa airplane. Um, but you know, the beauty of that is that it's light. <laughs> um, I'll pull a weight on it, but it's, it's, you know, as you can see, this thing is super light. I could turn this, I could flip it over my head to avoid brush. I actually carry it on my back, which I'll show you. Um, so I did buy the center column. Um, this was probably you know one of the most more expensive pieces uh, and i'll put a link to it that's a ball head that i'm using just had a, an extra really right stuff ball head that i don't use much i'm using it upside down uh certainly i'm sure it's not you <laughs> not made for that but it works just fine uh you could use a fluid head or any any kind of head that, that you want you know in that regard um and the fluid head might work okay i i, I aired away from it my fluid head that i have is a, a, a manfrotto it's a little bit bigger heavier um I don't like how hard it is to move. It, it's you know pretty tough fluid head. As it turns out, you can you can move this whole blind a little bit right to left, just easy. It floats on top of the water, and, and actually, I can I found yesterday I could pan really steady with it. I don't want to move too much and scare the ducks, but it's very smooth. Um, and you know I've set the head to to free spin as well, so the head you know you can pan with just a camera if you if you hold the sides of your blind here uh, while you're turning on the water. Um, let's see, try to do this organized way. You'll see on top here I have um, 
some straps out here. These are actually clips. This is actually off of a, a hunting rig, uh, that, that a back, backpack rig that I put on top of this, I'll show you, uh, just for quick disassembly and for carry. Um, here, uh, actually, what, what I like about the, the, the base here, I guess I call it the base, yeah, it might be better without holes, but it's kind of nice because when you're in here, that gives you a nice spot to, to, to set stuff. You can operate. The camera never could fall into the water. It'll literally, if it were to come loose, this would just literally rest on the deck, um, which is nice. I don't know if we'll be able to see this. Let me try. Up in here, we've got the tensioner on this center column. This is just a spare center column that I had to fix. And then literally, we can just move the center column up, tighten it back in. Can't show you one-handed. Actually, uh, let me try it. Move it up. It's a little bit stiff. Tighten it. This obviously sets your camera height. You know, and the camera's easy in and out. No real concern there. I, I don't have one. Um, I got a couple little night eyes up in here just hooking stuff. Uh, uh, spare fanny pack uh, that we had. Uh, you know, I'd probably get black, but in that, you know, I can put my batteries, extra cards, you name it. Um, so it's right there where I need it. My hands did get a little cold yesterday. It was 30 here in Michigan uh, in the water for, I don't know, three, four hours. Um, I, I'm going to take an extra hand muff or hand warmer or even some big mittens and affix them on each side or right across the center of this floor. Uh, just, you know, Velcro on and off and just put some hot hands in there. That would be a, a huge, huge help just to have those in there in and out and just, just get out and work the camera when you need to. Um, let's see. I'll actually show you some pics of this with the camo on it too. Um, it kind of pretty much covers it, guys. So just the top here, I guess, this hoop. This is a PEX hoop, just a regular PEX plumbing line. You could use anything. Something a little bit stiff would work. A hula hoop, you know, a tent stake if you had it, whatever you have. I made it like this. It's just a, another tip from Ray, just to keep uh, that camel off your head. So you've got this space in here to operate, and it's not just sagging on your head, bugging you, moving every time you do, you know, etc. So this is just cheap, you know, four dollar stuff, painted it black, and uh, zip tied it on top. So the biggest complication I guess I had here with making this or two, one was a fix in this center column. It comes with this with this piece. This disc if you will and it, you know obviously your carbon fiber tube slides up and down through that so I had to drill three holes through there actually I drilled a couple more had some problems drilled three little holes through there I got some little sheet metal here just very thin stuff it's a you know puts you in the mind of duct work in your basement um, and just use that to beef up the the uh, plastic because there's not much there um, I put a piece of that on top and a piece on bottom you can see here and that just gives me you know thickness and rigidity to put that to, to hook that column to and give it some purchase and it, it won't spin at all now it's on there for good and it's lightweight here's just a little uh, little clamp to hold the phone uh, if, you, if you so choose you know you can do your texting videos pictures whatever you want from in there and the other complication was I built this thing and I wanted to build it so that when that post is down it was no more than 20 inches 21 inches is the is the height that i've got in the back of my truck um, to put this into without taking it apart without taking the tunnel cover off so that was a limiter but i thought i'd be okay got to looking at it more got to considering where my waders come up to on me and uh, just how i'd be standing and i could tell it just wasn't going to be enough so i actually added some elevators i guess i'd call them extension tubes inside these tubes with just pvc um, I think I used inch if I recall but it fits in there just beautifully and I'll, I'll uh, set up the camera here and show you that so that gives me believe it or not just four or five more inches of extension and that makes all the difference in the world and I can actually see under here good I can stand comfortably because uh, the one thing I found I, I just can't lean over or bend over um, or even sit comfortably for hours and hours it's best if I can just stand straight up and or at least relieve the back and then just hunch down a little bit when I'm shooting so this gave me the extra height there and it was you know pretty easy fix and then again all I have to deal with are these four Hillman pins you know when I get to the parking lot just adjust that and it's it's no big deal you can carry some extra pins actually up in up in the the, the bag there if you uh 
if you lose one, you know, it's good to have, have an extra on you. Uh, things get hectic down there in the dark uh, in the morning. And I could say I would want to do that at the at the parking lot versus versus at the marsh. You know, I kind of forgot yesterday, and that was a mistake on my part. Uh, but let me let me show you that now. Yeah, one thing I wanted to show is this backpack attachment. Uh, you can get it on here. Sometimes it's a little tricky. It wants to flip around on me. I'll put a link to this in the description. This is a tree stand carrying backpack. Worked good for this though. I don't know if I have these top ones hooked up or not. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with those. Those are a little trickier to get at. Anyways, that's how she looks. I think she's doing okay. I can take this anywhere. Yeah, it's a little wide, you gotta be careful. Um, especially getting into the edge of a marsh, but walking down a road, across the field, around the edge of something, no problem. Pretty light, both hands free. You can even put the camera on a carrying shoulder carrying strap, which I generally would tend to do. So I still have both hands free. The camel is in a bag that I tie in the back. It's not in here now, but that just hangs on the back. You know, away you go. Now, we got to some thick stuff. Uh, you know, the edge of a lot of marshes, a lot of brush and stuff. You probably want to take it off and, and uh, you even put the unit over the head. There should be no problem. So I would, that's what I would do if I had to go through some nasty stuff. Because again, you don't want to break these boards off the bottom. So take it down. And like I say, if you had to get into somewhere thick, you literally just carry it in high, you know, so you weren't hitting any brush. Take care of it. And this thing I, I generally just pop off and stole along the side, kind of like you would a life jacket. You just literally unclip. And there's several ways you can hook it on, maybe better than I'm doing. Top one too. I just stole this around the side, you know. You can clip them back in if you want so it's not floating away on you. You're not having to leave it there. Sure, I take everything with me that I carry in. You can go out with me. Clip it around there, just like that. Throw your camera over, you're good to go. I'll probably come with a way just to kind of leave it on top though, because it does impair your ability to see up to one side. That may or may not be a problem for you. You may want that extra, you know, security, but I don't think you need it. I think it'd be better to be able to see. So I'd probably come with a way to just, just leave it on the top side. The pole's got to be able to slide the center column up and down, so it can't be directly over the top like I carry it. Here's just a video of that the backpack. I was telling you about pretty simple again you could use anything maybe you got your own backpack or own way to do it this just come to mind this is what you use for tree stands I just leave these receivers on here at all times hook in the clamps to the backpack the buckles I should say that are already on there of course with the wrong one the video. Pop the Mac out of there. There we go. There we go. Pop them in. Just like that. Now I've got these ones up here too that will pop in here. I don't hook these on on the on the demonstration. Um, I have a little bit of trouble getting in and out of it for some reason. There's a lot of flopping going around. I might even cut the waist thing off. <laughs> I hate to do that or take it off. Yeah, I can take it off, it looks like. I might just, well, no, I can't really. I have to, yeah, I have to leave it on. Um, it kind of flips around and gets in the way, especially in the dark with waders on. Uh, so I leave the top shoulder straps off here, connection points. If I could get it on, once I get this figured out, I'm, I'm new to it, but put that in there. It actually works really nice to cinch this down. Then you don't get any side-to-side -side play with this thing when you're walking. 
right now you get a little bit but it's not much it's it's just nice to be able to carry it and have your hands free but that's the idea okay so here i'll try to show you the here i'll try to show you the clips and how they work and my extension here just pop these clips out they're called hillman clips as i recall quarter inch I would do this at the parking lot after I pulled out of the back of the truck. Just pop those out. This gets a little bit, got to kind of go level and just work with it. One of the worst times there, of course. That gives me all oh, another four or five inches of height. That gives me the height that I need to stand comfortably, and she's solid. It's a pretty good fit. They fit tight on there. It's just as tough. You can see I can, I can move it all around. Okay, so that's what that's all about. I just leave those camel covers everything up. Can't see it. Uh, so that was a, a pretty good quick fix. Um, once I had limited the height for under the tailgate. Figured I might as well show you how the camel looks on this thing. While well, I got it up, got a couple holes in this one for the top column, one for the camera. Probably need to identify those with some reflective tape or something. They're kind of hard to see in the dark. Where it holds pretty good, and it's got on each corner, it's got these strings that came on it. You can see that. I just loop those around the boogie board, really. I'm going to find a better way to fasten it down the front, probably, too. But here we have the hole for the camera lens. Just slide that in there. I'm not going to hook it over the boards now. You can get the drift there. You can see it in the still pictures. About like that. Yeah. So here it is with the netting on it. Looks a lot like muskrat mounds I see out there in the marsh. It just kind of, kind of looks a lot like those. The boards you could paint a different color. I don't know if anything's better than the other. It kind of looks like dark water. I don't know. Well, you could paint it brown like the rest of it. Wouldn't matter, I don't think. And then sneaking around the back here, just to give you a shot of what the back looks like. Probably go a little longer. I think I'm gonna get another net and throw it. This net is a little difficult to see through, so I gotta be careful not to double it up. And then here's the inside. So literally, we're just hiding in here, floating. And this thing's so light. I mean, it move it around, spinning on a dime. It's kind of bad in the sense that if it is windy, one, your water's gonna be rough and it's gonna be tough on the shots, anyways. But two, it wants to blow this thing around, so you know, no big deal. Just kind of gets a little bit annoying. You hold it there. I think that shows it pretty good. Again, the whole thing's pretty light. We don't have the camera added, but it's just, there's nothing to it. I'm just gonna throw it in the back of the truck and wrap up. So we're done with the shoot. Time to put it back in the truck. Take the helmet pins back out, camo off. A little easier putting it down. Down. Put this all the way down. Let's go flush. I put holes in the front here just so I can get confused with the side. Or when it was collapsed. And this you wouldn't have to do. This is you could you know take it apart right now into two pieces. That might help you to put it into a car, maybe, you know, I don't know. Probably the boogie boards staying attached would be a problem, I would guess. But that yeah, would take the height in half. You could just lay it in there in two pieces. Um, but there she goes. Be ready to go to the truck. And from the ground or water level up to the top we've got uh just shy of twenty one inches, so we should fit. No problem. Okay, so here we can see it in the back of the truck. 
It's collapsed state. Real light. You don't have to adjust the tunnel cover. No opening it. No leaving it open when we're driving. I can go anywhere with this thing. Um, less than 48 inches side to side. So it's good to go. Works real well. Spot in the middle for the waders. Well, here we are. First time out in the floating blind. Not much sun at all yet. Tough seeing through here. Had a few come through, some ringnecks, hooded mergansers, heard a ton of mallards, don't know where they went. Seen a buffalo head, uh, nothing real close, we'll keep watching. So far so good. These hooded mergansers were particularly cooperative uh, in coming in fairly close uh, on my first try out. I uh, love watching these hoodies. It's quite a show when this big guy come barging in, uh, all puffed up, throwing his head back and uh, doing the croaking that they do. Uh, he definitely was the uh, bull in the china shop. I know this video turned out longer uh, than I intended, but I just wanted to show everybody uh, the aspects and the thinking. Uh, so hopefully they can uh, you know, help you or you can, you can make changes that will suit you better. Here, I'm just going to leave you with some build photos. Um, and you can, if you have any questions, just you know, leave comments. And I'll try to respond to them. Big thanks again to Ray Hennessy, uh, one, for the design, but two, uh, for, the, for the inspiration. Uh, beautiful photography. And I really enjoy seeing uh, you know, your photos and uh, the, the videos that you've been sharing on YouTube. Uh, it's great stuff and on your website. Um, so again, hopefully everybody gets out there, uh, stay safe and take some great photos. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.